my name is Tina Gelly and I work for the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. And the game um, experience that the, the kids are going to do is called Passages. Passages was a game that was developed in the early 90s um, when there was conflict in Kosovo and there were a lot of refugee children going into schools um, into Western Europe. And they were facing a lot of discrimination um, because people didn't understand why they were there. The first module is basically the, fam the, the kids are divided up into different families. So each family gets a family game sheet and they get a scenario that explains who their family is, what profession they might have, whether they're a complete family with a mother, father and children. At the beginning of this module, um, the players, the families are handed a card which, which basically explains that one of their family members is injured. Sit in your lines! Sit in your lines! Stay with your family! In module two, each family uh, member is blindfolded and a scenario is read out that explains that uh, their village is being attacked by bombs that are falling. Um, they're out at the market as a family, but while the bombs are dropping, there's too much heavy cloud and sp heavy clouds and smoke, and it's very loud, and they lose each other, and they have to try to find each other in the chaos. Some of the items have already gone. The other refugees came through. They took some of the supplies, so some of the supplies are missing. In this module, um, families are, it's called emergency supply case, and families are given five minutes to decide what they want to take with them. They're given a sheet of paper. They're told they have five minutes to decide what they want to take. In this module, the families um, have to cross the border. They need to go over here. Go over there. Go to that scenario. First, they're getting a form that they need to fill out. It's a very important form. They've been told they've lost all their identity documents. And then you have uh, people playing border officials who deliberately try to make it very difficult for them to cross. I'm a bus driver. You're a blind bus driver. You're not, you're not crossing. Bueno, rápido, rápido. Hey, hey. Lucky oh, you've got your supplies. Yeah. You can cross. And then once they have crossed the border, they need to go to see the immigration officer. Where is your spokesperson? Hey, up, and they have to present their form to the immigration officer. And the immigration officer deliberately gives them a, a, a difficult time. Check their family number. Where's your single file? Where's your single file? Yep. So frustrating. I know. It's Some so people just don't understand. I'm sorry. Are you ready for your interview? Paperwork, 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 paperwork here. Where's your paperwork? You have the code. Thank you, bye. Hey, hey! 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 Tell us why you would like to enter our country. It All seems right. to be in it order. It seems to be in order. And then in the final module, is basically we hand out a form um, which has all different emotions on it. Uh, it started off fairly well. We got everything we needed. Well, actually, we wrote our supply list on like the wrong piece of paper. So then I was getting yelled at for like a long time. And then, they and then uh, we got a tent. And then a lot of people were trying to like steal from us. And I, I, I don't know, it just turned to like a war zone. And like people were getting like thrown and like people were fighting over water or like empty water. The paperwork. They have it. Paperwork. They have it. Give me a green card. Yes. You follow the rules. And then we got down to the field. And then they gave us a green card, and then the group in front of us also got a green card. But then the same guy who gave it to them said it was fake and threw it away. We were quite exasperated throughout because I know someone had to bite another refugee because of stealing. And we didn't really make it to the end because we didn't know where to go. Our family was called the Smith family. It started off, we found it difficult to to get our supplies because we couldn't get any of our supplies so we had to run around looking for someone to give us a green card. We didn't even need one and then we eventually got it. And then we had to send one of our youngest to go get water and then they didn't get water, instead they got shot at. We got safe passage to go get food and water so then we got attacked by Mr. Puckett. 
But eventually we got to the border, we were just smuggled in. So I heard some themes of exhaustion and crime and uh, frustration and all of those kinds of emotions. I thought in particular that edge between the criminal element and needing to prove you were worthy to get into the country was particularly interesting. And the next time you see or read a news report, think about that edge of trying to support your family, but also trying to get them in. That I had one emotional point. I was with the Baker family, great family, but um, the 12-year-old son got lost. You know, the first time he was blindfolded and went off and he got lost. And that was a very emotional time for me. I just, just hit me. I thought, imagine your 12-year-old son is now lost. One of the things that struck us as we, we were going through our role um, we kind of decided on this approach to take, which was that we'd, we'd ask the families for their ID, rough them up a little bit, and then we'd, we'd, we'd do a little hostage exchange, where we'd take the smallest child and say, unless they gave us some stuff, we'd keep the youngest child. Uh, and what was really powerful is when we were speaking to the heads of the family, they were genuinely upset. They're like, I don't want to make that decision. I don't want to have to decide between my child and, and the goods that are going to get us across the border. And I think from, from, from our point of view, as being involved in it, I mean, these are kind of some of the tough decisions that are made. And, and it was really interesting to see how a lot of the groups responded. We're closed right now. You're not in the right place. Right, next, next. Next doesn't look right. Where did you get this? We actually didn't really have an idea of what you needed to do to get past us. Can and I think, can you form I don't know, I think that might be kind of, you might see that in real life. We, uh, we knew you were supposed to have forms, signatures, but not really how and where. We're closed right now. It was also a little confusing because there were so many people and so many forms that we just didn't have time to go through them all because we were just crowded. But we felt that this was the best way for you to, to understand what these people are going through. And there are thousands and thousands of people attempting border crossings and dying every day. And so we felt this was the best simulation out of all the ones we'd read that would give you more empathy with what is actually happening in the world today. And what we often find during this is that Many people end up, you know, they might have been against refugees and not really understanding who a refugee is, but once they've played the game, they seem to develop empathy towards them and a better understanding that, you know, refugees are people just like us. They want the same things that we do. We want, they want a safe place to live. They want to be able to have their children go to school. They want to be able to, you know, access health care. Um, they want to be able to work to support their families. And usually by the end of the game, people have realized that, yeah, refugees are just like us.